With Kling 2.5 out now, there are so many new things we can do with AI video, it's honestly wild. But there's still one thing most people just can't figure out, keeping their characters consistent. I've seen a lot of Kling 2.5 users running into this same issue. The crazy thing is, getting consistency in Kling 2.5 is actually really simple. You just need to know a few tricks. I'm going to teach you two simple workflows for rock solid character consistency in Kling 2.5, plus one tool that makes the whole process cheaper, easier, and better. So the tool we're going to be using to create consistent characters inside Kling 2.5 is called OpenArt. The reason I use OpenArt is just because it gives me everything in one place. I can use it to create both images and videos, and I get access to all the best models, all under one subscription. Instead of jumping between a bunch of different tools, I can pretty much do everything right here. It just makes the whole process way faster and easier. Once you sign up and log in to OpenArt, you'll want to go over to the image section on the left side. That's where we're going to start for our first way of creating consistent characters. This one's not my favorite, and you'll see why when we get to the next method, but it still does a really good job if you just want consistent videos in Kling 2.5. For this example, I want us to create a video with Ellie from the game The Last of Us as our main character. To do that, I've got this image of Ellie right here that I found online. The next thing I want to do is take that image and turn it into a new AI image. I'm going to switch my model over to Nano Banana by clicking this button right here. As you can see, it's super simple to do inside OpenArt. Then I just upload my image and for the prompt, I'm going to write, expand this image into a full body shot. And what we get back is a full body version of the same image, which we can now use to create a pretty solid video with Kling 2.5. I'm gonna download this image, then I'll go to the video section and select Kling 2.5. After that, I'll paste in my image and use this prompt right here. Cinematic third person shot of a tense young woman in a rainy, foggy forest, slowly turning her head and scanning her surroundings with suspicion. Camera starts close on her face, handheld feel, slight breathing motion, then the camera slowly circles around her and pulls back to reveal the dark forest around. Moody lighting, blue-gray tones, wet atmosphere, natural rain reflections, shallow depth of field, realistic character animation, subtle wind moving her hair and clothes, I'll leave duration to five seconds, and the quality mode to pro. And finally, I'm just gonna click create. And as you can see, we get this really cool high quality video that most importantly keeps our character consistent. It's easy to stay consistent in one video. What's hard is matching that same look across multiple videos. Luckily, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. Now I'm gonna take the image and head back over to image creation. I'll make sure Nano Banana is still selected and then I'll import my image. For the prompt, I'll write, the girl is now pointing a bow at the camera. Once that's done, I'm going to re-upload this new image and tell it to zoom the camera out a bit. The reason I do this in three separate regenerations is because Nano Banana works best when you only give it one chance to focus on at a time. If you ask it to do too many things in one go, it usually messes something up. So doing it step by step like this gives you both faster and better quality results. Now go back to the video section. I'll import my new image off with Ellie, pointing her bow at the zombie. For the prompt, I'll write this. Cinematic shot of a wounded young woman cautiously looking around through a misty post-apocalyptic forest. Rain drizzles lightly as she scans her surroundings, breathing heavily, blood on her face. The camera follows behind her shoulder with a slight handheld motion. After a few seconds, she notices movement. A zombie slowly emerges from the fog ahead. She stops, narrows her eyes, and quietly raises her bow. The camera shifts to a tense side angle as she draws the string fully, aiming steadily at the creature. The scene ends right before she releases the arrow. Moody blue-gray lighting, soft depth of field, cinematic realism, subtle rain sound and ambient wind. I changed the duration to 10 seconds, but kept the same quality. Then let's take a look. This one came out even better. It ends subtly right before she presumably takes the shot, which adds a much more cinematic, movie-like feel to the whole generation. The quality is still super high, and the best part is that not only is the character perfectly consistent, but what if you want to go even further? What if you want to make hundreds of images of the same character? Different outfits, environments, lighting, doing all that manually in Nano Banana would take forever. That's exactly where OpenArt's character feature makes all the difference. And that's exactly what we're going to test out next. So the character feature works like this. It's basically like training your own little AI model whose only job is to make consistent images of one character. That's all it does. For this example, I'm actually gonna use a different character. I have this image of Aloy from Horizon, and what I'll do first is download that image. Then I'm going to head back over to OpenArt and create a new image of her just standing on a white background. This is going to be done with Nano Banana, and it's super simple. I'm just going to say in the prompt, 
make the background solid white. And this is the image we get back. The reason I'm doing this is that to train our model to be as consistent as possible, we need a few different images that the AI can learn from. Ideally, you can upload up to 100 different images, all with different lighting, angles, and poses. But for this showcase, I'm just going to create a full all-around view of the character. That alone is more than enough to train a really solid model. So I'll re-upload the same image a few times and just tweak the prompt slightly. For example, I'll write things like, make the image of her standing and looking to the right, looking to the left, facing slightly to the right, slightly to the left, and so on. And I'm already getting a ton of different variations. I'll download all of them, then head over to the character section. From here, I'll select the first option, which lets me start with multiple images. Now, there are actually two other ways you can do this. You can start with a single image, and that's perfectly okay, but just know it might hurt your model's overall consistency. The other option is to start with just a text description, which is useful if you have no images at all. OpenArt will automatically generate a few images based on that description, and then you can pick the one that best matches your idea. But for this example, I'm going to start with four or more images. I'll import all the ones we just made, name the character Aloy, and then click Create Character. Now I'll just wait a couple of seconds while the model is generating. The cool thing about OpenArt is, most tools take around an hour to train a model like this. But here, it's done in just a few minutes. Once the model is created, it'll show up at the bottom under My Characters. From here, you can simply click Create to start generating new images. The main thing you'll want to focus on here is the Prompt Reference section. You can start by posing your character with the 3D Render widget, which lets you control every part of the body and then drop them into any setting you want. Now in the prompt reference field, it might look a bit complicated at first, but I'll walk you through the main things you need to know. First, your character automatically gets tagged in here. That's important because if you have multiple characters, this makes sure the exact one you want is selected. Then you've got prompt adherence. It tells the AI how strictly to follow your prompt. It's super useful when you have something very specific in mind and you don't want the AI to mess with it. Character weight decides how much the AI keeps your character's original look and the keep close the same toggle basically does what it says. It keeps the outfit consistent across generations. If you turn it off, you can safely make changes to the character's clothes without affecting the face or overall look. That's basically all the main settings. You can also adjust things like aspect ratios and other basic options. Now with all that set up, I'm gonna go ahead and write my prompt right here. Aloy standing on the edge of a high mountain ridge at sunrise, overlooking a vast range of misty peaks. Wind gently moves her hair and outfit as soft golden light hits the landscape. Cinematic composition, detailed environment with layered mountains, morning haze, and a calm, reflective atmosphere. Since I want this one to stay pretty consistent, I'm gonna turn up the prompt adherence just a little bit. I'm also leaving the keep close the same toggle on, since I want her outfit to stay consistent the whole time. I'll set it to 16 to nine, add more images and click create. We get some really, really nice looking results. I think I like this one the most, so I'll download it. And then in the image section, I'm just going to upload that image. In this video, I'm making a short clip of our character getting on a horse. I'm going to keep all of the settings exactly the same as in our first generation, then use this prompt, cinematic third person shot of Aloy walking toward her horse on a windy mountain ridge at sunrise. She moves steadily through the gravel, wind sweeping through her hair and clothes as the camera tracks her from behind. Reaching the horse, she stops beside it, gently places a hand on its neck and then smoothly mounts the saddle. The wind picks up as golden light flares across the horizon and the camera slowly pans around to capture her gazing out over the vast mountain range before the scene fades. Realistic animation, golden hour lighting, natural motion, cinematic tone, and then click generate and let's take a look. The video came out looking really, really cool. I love that Kling actually gets environments and even basic physics now. It's such a big step up. For example, the movement of her getting on the horse is done really nicely. So now I want the story to progress a little bit. I'll go back to the character section. And for this one, I'll write, Aloy galloping through a golden cornfield at sunset, captured from a slightly side angle as her red hair flows in the wind while the horse charges forward. Cinematic motion and dynamic camera perspective convey speed and energy with cornstalks blurring past and warm sunlight highlighting her armor and determined expression. Realistic lighting, detailed environment, and a dramatic adventurous tone. You get some really solid images of her galloping through the cornfield. I'll download this one, go back into Kling, and upload the image. Then I'll paste in this prompt right here, cinematic third person shot of Aloy galloping at full speed through a glowing cornfield under warm sunset light. The camera follows dynamically at her side, handheld and slightly shaky, capturing the motion of the crops 
and flying dust illuminated by golden light. Wind moves through her hair and clothes as the horse races forward. Cinematic lighting, detailed motion, and an adventurous atmosphere. And here's the result. And again, it looks super realistic. All the consistency stays the same, no matter the angle, pose, or lighting change. Now you know exactly how to keep your characters consistent in Kling 2.5, no matter the scene or lighting. Just imagine how many videos you can now make without worrying about characters changing halfway through or how long your scenes are. And the best part is all of this is possible through open art. It makes everything way easier, keeps it all under one plan and even lets you host your own model so you can get unlimited consistency across every project without switching tools. Want to make videos like this? Sign up for open art using the link in the description and I'll see you in the next one.